Hey, what's going on now? All right. Hey. like any other me. I'm not bad. I'm not bad at all. From Kansas City and Germany, 9 30 this morning. Oh man. Who won? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we are rejoicing and glad to be in this day. Amen. 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 We're going to hear this. In this house, we'll feel good forever. You will be on this. We thank God that you are able to tune in amen. to the service at Greater Spiritual Fellowship amen, Community amen, Church amen, amen. in Union Head, Maryland. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. 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 God has brought us through some, some dangerous things. I've seen him speak. Amen. amen. He has brought us through some troubles and some, some peace times. God has brought us this kept us over the last week. He kept us and he allowed us to see another day. Yes. Praise the Lord. He didn't have to do it. He did not have no. to do it. Mm. Not only did he allow us to see another day, amen, but he gave us a new compassion, new grace and mercy, amen. 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 His grace and mercy is everlasting, amen. His compassion is new every day, amen. So God.
the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then he, Hezekiah, turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech you, how I have walked before you in truth and with a whole heart, and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Before Isaiah had gone out of the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Return and say to Hezekiah, the leader of my people, Thus says the Lord, the God of your father David, I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. On the third day you should go up to the house of the Lord. And I will add 15 years to your life. Mm -hmm. And I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake. And for my servant David's sake. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Amen. This morning I want to speak on this subject. Your present condition is not your future conclusion. Amen. 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 Your present condition is not your future conclusion. And by future I mean it could be tomorrow or the next day, next year, whatever. So how it is today doesn't mean it's going to be like that forever. The word condition, as defined by Webster Dictionary, means a mode of being or a form of existence of a person or a thing. It can mean a state at a particular time. Now what we need to understand today is that as Christians, is that whatever condition we may have, God has a remedy for it. Amen. Because it's not what we have, but what the Lord can deliver us from Amen. and bring us out of. Amen. Amen. Now at times, it seems as though our situation saints are the final chapters of our lives. <laughs> It seems as though everything we'll try is not working. We'll pray and we'll pray, we'll cry and we'll cry, we'll moan and did us of everything, but nothing has changed. But God wants you to know today that He can turn your trials into triumphs Amen. to make your present condition not your future conclusion in life. Now, from Hezekiah's story and stuff, I will lift up two ways that we can assist in making this happen. Amen? Amen. You know that God can do all things. Amen. Right. Amen? But sometimes he needs us to have faith and do Amen. some things on the table uh, before he step in Amen. to move. Amen. Amen? So the first thing I want to lift up to you is that we need to have a place to recharge and to rekindle our faith. Amen. If we Amen. want our present condition not to stay our future conclusion. Amen. 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 Because there comes a time in life that we have to remove ourselves from everyone and everything. Mm -hmm. There are going to be some situations that require all of our attention. And so we have to get rid of some distractions and distractors. Amen? Amen. There's come a time when advice from family and friends isn't going to help you much because they just can't understand well, your present condition. Amen. Well, and even going to counseling might not always work. Amen. However, there's a place that you can go to to seek counsel. To get peace for life problems. It's going to be a time where the preacher can't be found, amen. Mm -hmm. Because the pastor or the preacher might be tied up and doing other things for other people, amen. amen. But then there's a place that you can go when your heart is thankful or overwhelmed, saints. There's a place you need to go when people, including your 
children and your spouses. Get on your last Amen. nerve. Amen. Well, there may be a place that you can go when you receive a bad report, where it's from the doctor or somebody else. Amen. Amen. And that place is called your secret closet. Amen. Your prayer closet. Amen. And this prayer closet can be your bedroom. It can be your bathroom. It can be your closet. It can be your car. It can be someplace on your office. It can be your backyard. It can be any place that you are sanctified for the Lord. But we need, saints, a place that what we can go to where it's just you and the Lord. Amen? Amen. This has to be a place of separation and consecration. This is a place where there's no television grabbing your attention. This could be a place that you don't have a cell phone turned on. You don't have that piece in your ear, amen. You don't have a landline ringing, amen. And this is a place where we go to have a little talk with Jesus. Amen. A place amen. that we can tell them all about our struggles and our trials. Amen. A place where we cry out and say, Father, I stretch my hand unto you, Lord. No other help I know. Because if you withdraw yourself from me, O oh Lord, where shall I go? Yes. This could be a place where we just cry out, it's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of grace. Yes. Not my mother, not my sister, not my brother, not my children, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of grace. It's me again, Lord. I have a prayer that I need an answer and that only you can answer, amen. It's me, oh Lord, that I have a problem that only you can solve because you're the problem solver. Lord God, I don't need to worry you, but I'm facing something new and I know that all of my help comes from you. That's your secret problem, saints. Now, the scripture says, in those days, Hezekiah became ill, and he was at the point of death. Says. Now, I don't know about you, but if the doctor was to tell me to get my affairs or house in order, now it would initially make my heart skip a beat, yes. yes. Now, come on, let's keep this thing real, amen. We're not super saints, amen. amen. We all want to live and to continue to enjoy this thing called life. Amen? Amen. We want to continue to enjoy our family and friends and other loved ones. That's why we quote Psalms 118, 17, which says, I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, the prophet Isaiah, who was the son of Amos, he went to Hezekiah and he said, he said, this is what the Lord said. It's not what Hezekiah, I mean, what Isaiah was saying, amen? But he said, this is what the Lord said. He said, put your house in order yeah. because you are going to die, amen? amen? So let's be absolutely clear about Hezekiah's prognosis for the Lord. Hezekiah is faced in a certain death because it, because it said he was deathly ill. So whatever he had, and I, it, it was terminal. And he would just fall a minute away from the grave, amen. Mm -hmm. Now say, hear me. It's one thing to be told by a fellow a doctor that you're going to die, amen. amen. But to be told by the Lord himself, mm -hmm. who never gets anything wrong, that you are going to die, amen. Prepare yourself. That's another story, amen. Amen. And this is what the Lord told Hezekiah to do through the prophet Isaiah. In Hezekiah's case, there probably was a good reason why he might have felt cheated out of the rest of his life. You see, at the writing of when Isaiah came to him, Hezekiah. He was not married. He had no children. He had no 
children to carry on his name and to continue his legacy. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to live as long as I can live. Amen? Amen. Don't get me wrong. I do want to see Jesus for myself. But I'm not quite ready, amen, to meet him right now. I'm okay with meeting him in the future. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, therefore, like Hezekiah, I think I will plead my case for mercy to a merciful God. If God came to me today and said, get your house in order, today you will be with me in paradise. Amen. Amen. That's important to know that Hezekiah, he was a godly king. So we read that Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. While on his deathbed and prayed, he pleaded his case that he had not been perfect, but he sure had been faithful to the Lord. Amen? amen. Now, we're not perfect, amen. But sometimes we can say, Lord, I've been faithful, amen? Yes. Amen. I just I've been perfect and faithful, amen, in everything. Because I have my daughter and I and I have my call 17. But to the best of my ability, amen, I try to be faithful. Now, I don't believe that there's nothing wrong with going to live and not die. Mm -hmm. Even if you read it, I mean, even if you love the Lord and all your heart, amen. Mm -hmm. How many of us, if given a choice or dying right now mm -hmm. or somewhat later, way in the future, <coughs> who would you choose? Mm -hmm. I know I would choose later. Mm -hmm. That's why we quote Psalm 34, 12 through 14, which says, Who is the man? who desires life and love length of days that he may see good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking down or deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Now in Hezekiah's case, I told you again, there was a, a reason again why he wanted to live. But as certain as his prognosis or his condition was, it did not deter Hezekiah from turning immediately to the Lord in prayer. And because we know that Hezekiah was a man of faith, we also know that he prayed a prayer of faith, amen. He wasn't cursing the Lord out and all that and those things, but he was praying a prayer of faith. So it does not come as any surprise that the Lord heard this man of God and granted him his request. History goes on to let us know that it would be three years later that Hezekiah would marry. Because you know he only had 15 years, amen? And it was shortly after that when his son Manasseh would be born. And it would, and it would be through that lineage that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, would come, amen. Somebody have to say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? So again, let's go back to Hezekiah. With his face to the wall. And the news about his impending death fresh in his ears. He made a careful and reflective view of his life. And he was able to claim a life of loyalty to God. Now, thanks, I found it interesting that Isaiah, the prophet, the man of God, gave this grim report to Hezekiah. And he didn't sit around, amen. Didn't say that he was going to pray for him or anything, amen. Mm -hmm. He said that he left the king by himself. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't it the preacher's job or somebody wanting to provide comfort after giving somebody bad news, amen? Mm -hmm. Well, the prophet Isaiah, he did not get too far before God stopped him, amen, and told him to go back to Hezekiah. Tell Hezekiah that he had heard his cry, and that he was going to add 15 more years to his life. Amen? amen. Now, I'll take 15 years over zero years. Amen? Amen. Say, you heard me say before that in prayer, we need to push. Pray until something happens. Amen. Well, and that's what he did. Amen. And God recognized the faithfulness of this man. Because he referred to him as the leader of his people. Now, I can't help but wonder how God reviews us today. What does he think of our Christian 
war. How does he welcome us in the throne room of heaven? How does he view our faithfulness and commitment to him? How does he view our participation in church? Are we faithful for his blessings? Or we get up morning after morning and don't ever say, God, thank you for another day. And if we ask God for just a few more years, well, he just look at us and said, why? Because <laughs> we have had more excuses why we can't do so for the Lord than call a hand of appeal. Well. Somebody asked you to pray, you got an excuse. Somebody asked you to come to the Bible, you got an excuse. Somebody asked you to serve, you got an excuse. Amen. Amen. Now, while Hezekiah was praying, he prayed for hope and faithfulness. And the reason there was because he, he could have cursed God to die. But he held on, thanks, to his hope. He held on to his faith, amen. Verses 2 and 3 says, Hezekiah appeals to God as a son who had not finished the work that God had assigned him to accomplish. And so Hezekiah bends on the grace of the Lord to grant him the time that is needed to finish his course and to complete his race. And God does just what he asks. Again, somebody has a shout out. Want to do it? Want to do it? Saints, we all have to enter our secret prayer closet when this journey gets so hard to bear. We all want into that secret prayer closet. Shut the door. Turn our heart to the Lord. Pray earnestly and verbally. Amen? Amen. Because God answers prayer. Amen. Amen. Now take note that Hezekiah did not allow his condition of death to distract him from his prayer of faith. Neither should we let our condition control us. Amen? Amen. We need to learn how to control our condition. Don't fall under the words of a doctor, lawyer, or bill collector. They don't have your conclusion. Amen. amen. They just go about your present condition. Amen. Yeah. So therefore, let your present condition drive you to the conclusion that God, through prayer in your secret closet, can change your future conclusion. Yeah. It's in Him that we live, move, and have our being. Amen? Amen. Amen. The last, second, the last point I want to bring to your attention. We need to know that our present condition, again, it's not our future conclusion. We have to know this thing, amen? amen. Not talk about it, but we have to know it by faith. Walk amen. by faith. Amen. Pray by faith, amen. Amen. amen? Now some of you here right now might think that your present condition is your future conclusion. You might think that how life is at this very moment where you're sick, busted, disgusted, amen, or whatever, that this is how your life it's always going to be, amen. You might feel the man, I can never get a break, amen. Every time I find myself taking one step, I find myself taking two steps back, amen. Now you come to the conclusion, that's what it's going to always be, amen. Amen. But God has the final say on your future, amen. 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 Therefore, we have to stop settling and believing that God cannot change our condition. Amen? Amen. Now, using drugs or drinking alcohol, it may be your present condition, mm -hmm. but God said it's not your future conclusion. Yeah, yeah. God said that, that he delivered Daniel from the lion's den. Uh -huh. He delivered the three Hebrew boys from the fire of yeah. And don't you think that he can deliver you Whatever you're going through, amen. 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 Yeah. amen. Somebody here might be struggling with fear, but God wants you to know it's not your future conclusion. Because God says, don't worry about what you are going through, amen. Don't worry about it, amen. Have faith that God can change your situation away. Right. Have yeah. faith yeah. that God can move mountains. Amen. Have faith amen. that God amen. can lift you up. Amen. Have faith amen. that God can. 
be in pain. And that's your present condition. But God is saying, it don't have to be your future conclusion. He says your pain is just one means of building up your faith muscle and reminding you that you're still alive. Yes. You're still alive, but yes. you still feel yes. pain. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because if you're dead, you won't be able to feel pain. Amen. 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 The abuse may be somebody's present condition. But God wants you to know well, it's not your future conclusion. Because right. He's saying to you, no weapon formed well, against you shall fall. Well, Read 
these words. It said, before Isaiah had left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. Go back, tell high Hezekiah, the leader of my people. This is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I've heard your prayer and seen your tears, and I will heal you. This is what I will get to. He said, on the third day from now, you will go to the temple of the Lord, and I will add 15 years to your life. Mm. God said again, when you're thinking that your present condition is your future conclusion, it's a lie. Because yeah. Satan wants you to feel that you are trapped in your present condition. Okay. It's not your future, amen? amen. Yeah. It's not until God says it's over, that's over. I'm here as a witness before the Almighty God mm -hmm. to let you know it's not over. Because God has not determined it's over for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes, things might be looking bleak for you. But don't put a period for God that's only for the calm. Amen? Amen. I don't think you all believe me. Amen? Amen. You need more of the witness. What God yeah, well. has done. Okay, come here, Moses. Now, you know Moses on, had some dishes. Right. Not, not just a stutterer, but he was a murderer, amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you read Exodus 2 and 12, you find that he killed an Egyptian, mm -hmm. killed him in the same. That was Moses' condition, amen. Mm -hmm. But it was not his conclusion. Because right. God later used this ex murderer yes, as a great emancipation. Amen. 
says in Revelation 3 and 20, Jesus said that he stands at the door and he knocks and that if any man should hear his voice and open that door that he will come in and he will sup with him. That door is the door to your heart. It is the door to your heart. Is there one who wants to commit their life to Jesus Christ? It would be a shame if you found out later after leaving here that what we said about Christ is true. That hell is a real place where there will be the gnashing of the teeth there was one who was looking for just a little, a drop of water just to quench his thirst, just to cool him off. Is there one? There may be somebody out there in the pews today that the back slid. You, you may have once had a great relationship with Jesus Christ and you fell off the wagon. You might feel like he won't, he's not there in your life. You may feel like things are not going your way. But he says, come. Cast all your cares on me. The scripture says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Do you believe? Do you believe? If you would like to have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you don't have one and you desire a relationship with him, I'm going to ask you just to say this simple prayer with me. You don't have to say it out loud, but the time is now. The time is now because we don't know what the future holds. You don't know what's going to happen when you walk out the door here today. But I just want you to close your eyes for just a moment and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I need a Savior. Lord, I don't want my soul to go to that place called hell when I die. And Lord, I want to follow your son, Jesus Christ, to that place that he promised. That place that you said of milk and honey. He said that he would go and prepare a place for us. But it's only for his children. I want to be adopted into the family, God. I want to follow your son.
son, Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 I want to follow him. I want to get to know him. Yes. I want to love him. Yes. Because he loved me first. Yes. 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 I want to be a real child of God, yes. not just by name. Yes. I want to be adopted by relationship. Yes. Yes. Take me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 If you Amen. said that prayer, yes. if you do not have a relationship with Christ and you said that prayer, mm -hmm. and you meant that prayer in your heart, mm -hmm. then you are now a child of God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. But that means that your life has changed. Mm -hmm. Your life is going to change. You're not going to be the same. Yes. If you think that you can have a relationship and commit your life to God, your life is going to be the same. I'm sorry, but you are mistaken. There may be somebody here today who is looking for a church home, maybe on Facebook. You don't have a church home? Greater Spiritual can be your church home. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You can give the pastor a call, text him. Yes, yes. Send a letter here to the church if you like. We'll welcome you with open arms. Yes, yes. We'll love on you. We'll say a prayer of salvation with you. Not say there may be some people that are maybe looking on or maybe in the house right now that want to come under watch king. If you're already a Christian, you belong somewhere. You belong to a church, but you can't get there off. We'll accept you in. Amen. You can come and have service with us on Sunday. Talk about the Lord. Learn how to love the Lord. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Don't let the time go by. And you not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you miss that train. Is there one? Praise God. Amen. 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 Perhaps somebody don't know. They say, but they're not sure. Amen. We want to take this time too. If you're not sure of your salvation, if you're not sure that when you breathe, your last breath for you will spend eternity. You need to come on down to make sure, amen, to make sure that you are in the faith, that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Doesn't matter if your name is already on the church floor. Doesn't matter if you've already been baptized. Amen. Some amen. people go down a, a, a dry devil, come on the wet devil, amen. But we want to make sure today because people are dying, left, and yes, right, they amen. They are dying here and there on the, on the street, amen. They are going to lose, amen. And so you want to make sure that, you, that, that, that straight bullets have your name on, amen, and the Lord God. And you die. That you want to make sure that you go to that place that Dick and Boyd talked about, that Jesus went away to prepare a place for us in heaven. You want to make sure that you go to that room, amen, in heaven. Not that room into hell or the lake of fire. Anyone today? Amen. We're just taking time today. Amen. Because we want everybody to be sure of their status. Amen. The, 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 the status of being saved or not being saved. Because if somebody asks you if I'm saved, you shouldn't be saved. Well, I go to church. That's not the question. If you saved, do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? Do you have a relationship with him? Amen. So at this time, if you're not sure, whatever. Amen. Come on down. Come on down. No condemnation. In the one today. In the one today. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask, uh, this is the first Sunday. This is our communion Sunday. We're going to ask, I'm just going to ask you, uh, I mean, Minister Bernard and Minister Brown to come forward and facilitate the serving of the communion. Amen. Amen. They can call Amen. on others for prayer or the reading of the scripture or whatever. Amen. 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 Matthew to come forth at this time. Amen. Amen. And facilitate the Lord's supper.
call them where we want at that time. Just go ahead and now. Just put me the tire, you want somebody to do something, just call them that. They don't have to come up. No, just go ahead and start the community. I just said call their name. You call them one of them at that time. Just five minutes for you. My heavenly Father, who are excellent is your name in all of you. Father, we come before the Lord God, recognizing and identifying the Lord God. That you died on the cross. That you died on Calvary. Your body was bruised and battered and beaten, torn apart. Blood ran from your body. And on that day, there were some people that were celebrating all that was done. They thought they had been done with you. But little did they know hmm, that your name, that your spirit would live on forever. And it would live on in your people. And Lord God, we come today to recognize your death, burial, and resurrection. We thank you, O Father, for all that you have done for us in our lives, Lord God. And Lord God, we thank you for just being who you are. Because if it had not been for you, Lord God, we would have no hope and no future where we would be going. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that those who are in the pews, Lord, for the come and take the communion today, Lord God, that they would come with a pure heart, that they would cast all their cares upon the altar. If there's any uh, anything that they have that is not pleasing in your sight, oh God, that they would ask that it be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. That if they have any offer of their brothers or their sisters or uh, anyone, any relationship, co-workers, family members, or whoever, that they would come and just drop it at the door. Father God, we know that, and we've heard this morning, Lord God, all the witnesses, Lord God, who you have done the impossible for. And we know, Lord God, that you specialize in the impossible. But Father God, as we come today, Lord God, we ask that you would take away all those things, Lord God, that are Bottoms on our mind and hearts, Lord God, that you would make us white as snow. That we will come with a clean, pure heart. We thank you, O oh Lord, for allowing us this opportunity to be in your house, Lord God, and recognize who you are. And as we take our communion, Lord God, this is something that we do on the first Sunday of every month. As you say, as often as we do it, we would recognize you. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We praise you. We lift you up. We love you. And we honor you. In Jesus' mighty and righteous name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Also, the communion is for baptized believers in Jesus Christ. Those who have given their lives to Jesus and been born again. So, so we have an open communion for those, again, who are saved. But once again, we're not the communion police, amen. You know for yourself when you've been accepted. If you have not given your life to Christ Jesus, we, we ask you not to partake of the communion element. But the scripture we read in a few minutes said, but sometimes we do things like that. You bring damnation upon yourself. Amen. And so amen. we ask you, even at this time, to search your heart. Yeah. Amen. You might have some unforgiveness in your heart or whatever in your heart. And so we ask you to get it right. Get it right before you take the communion. Amen. 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 So turn it back over to you. The scripture that I'll be reading is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and it starts at the 23rd verse. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took of the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Amen. 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 Wherever, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to his to himself and not discerning the Lord's body. But this cause many a weak and sickly among you and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Amen. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Amen. 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 What about? No, we didn't do it yet. Just call the name after the point. I think he wants you to just do the uh, facilitate the serving of the way. Do the facilitate of the way. Do the facilitate the serving of the way. And on the same night, Saint, Christ had the wine passed around and he blessed it. And he said, this is my blood. The blood of the New Testament, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It had been shed. And Saints, there's no forgiveness without the blood. There's yes. no. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, there must be bloodshed. Jesus, when he shed his blood, he shed his blood for yes. all of mankind. Yes, he did. No redemption without the blood. Drink it all. <laughs> <laughs> 
We pray, Lord God, for the report, Lord God, and all that she goes through, Lord God. Heal her from the crown of her head to the soul yeah. of her feet yeah. right now in the name of yeah. Jesus. Send the word to heal, Lord God. Deliver yeah. her in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And who might to be, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. We lift up my take and up Sean for that Sam Grinson and Alex Macklin, Lord God, and Jacob Cruz, Lord. Just a few young men, Lord God. Yeah. Serving in the military, yeah. Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for their strength and their stamina, Lord God. We pray that you'll keep their mind, Lord God. Keep them strong and be disciplined, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Grow them up, Lord God, as men. Let them be good soldiers, Lord God. In the army, Lord God. Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for those who are still sail, Lord God. Derek Candace, Lord, Lord God. Some still having pain crisis, Lord God. Lift up my niece, Erica, Lord God. Just being diagnosed with sickle cell. So many others, Lord God. Have these diseases, Lord God. You know the ones, Lord God, that has cancer, Lord God. We call on you, Lord God, to heal their bodies, Lord God. But you are a healer, Lord God. Lord God, touch them right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray, Lord God. Lord God, continue to pray for Lynn, Lord God, for Lynn Swan and her family, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for those who are grieving and praying for them and others who have lost loved ones, Lord God. We call on your name for that, Lord God. And then, Lord God, that we lift up the marriages to you, Lord God. Yes. Some are struggling in their marriage, Lord God. Somebody's separated, Lord God. Somebody's going through a, even a divorce right now, Lord God. Lord. But Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, that your will be done, Lord yes. God. We yes. pray that you will move right now, Lord God. And not only in marriage, Lord God, even in every relationship, Lord God. Lord God, we pray for relationships, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to decide, Lord God, where we're going to stay on go, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, even help us decide when we get married or not get married, Lord God. So, Lord God, let's be putting on the altar today, Lord God. So, Lord God, we don't want to be fighting and abusing all that stuff going on, Lord God, in marriages and relationships. You say, Lord God, that we need to learn how to get along, Lord God. So, so, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, for peace, Lord God. In all of our relationships, peace in this church, Lord God, peace in our homes, Lord God, peace on our jobs, Lord God. Lord God, everybody desire peace, Lord God. Yes. So, Lord God, we just pray that you would dispatch your peace, Lord God, to all of us, Lord God. Because we all stand in the need of peace, Lord God. Yes. We pray, Lord God, for deliverance, Lord God. Yes. Some are suffering, Lord God, they bound with this, Lord God. It could be anger, it could be bitterness, Lord God. It could be drugs or alcohol. It could be food, Lord God. Whatever, Lord God. You are a deliverer, Lord God. Yes. Set your people free, Lord God. Yes. Yes. Lord God, remove all the devices from, from us, Lord God. Lord God, we just pray, Lord God, that we will see our bodies at the temple of the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Lord God. So, Lord God, because our bodies have been bought with a price, my Father. So, Lord God, let us, Lord God, serve you in this body, Lord God. Serve you with our minds, Lord God. Order our steps, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Yes. Some, Lord God, are struck with our finances, Lord God. But, Lord God, we know that you, that there's no shortage in heaven, Lord God. So, Lord God, for they need a job, Lord God, for they need a promotion, Lord God, or for they need money management, Lord God. We pray, God, that we be wise stewards of the money that we have, Lord God. Be wise in our spending, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Sometimes, Lord God, you allow us to help other people in their distress, Lord God. So, Lord God, help us, Lord God, to be better money managers, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to be able to pay our bills, Lord God. Lord God, yes. help us, Lord God, pay our tithes and our offers, Lord God. Because the word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his wife was all these other things, Lord God. He said that food, clothes, and all those other things will be added to you, Lord God. So, Lord God, let you become a priority of our lives, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, Lord God, for so many people, Lord God. That needs prayer, Lord God. Yes. Even for aches and pains, Lord God. Yes. Our bodies, Lord God. Yes. The eyes, Lord God. Our pains in the hips, back, shoulders, neck, yes. Lord God. Wherever pain might be, Lord God. We are praying, Lord God. Yes. Praying, Lord God, for my brother, William, Lord God, that's in the hospital, Lord God. Lord God, the COVID, Lord God. Pray for my, my brother, Walter, Lord God. His entire family, Lord God, has COVID, Lord God. Yes. But Lord God, COVID is raging, Lord God. But Lord yes. God, we just pray that we protect ourselves, Lord God. We are truly in this new season, Lord God. A lot of germs are in the air, Lord God. But Lord God, we still trust you, Lord God. We still trust you that we are not going to walk around in fear, Lord God. But Lord God, but we still be cautious, Lord God. We pray, God, for those who awake, all can transplant, Lord God. Those on dialysis, Lord God. We 
praying, Lord God, that you just make a way, Lord God. We are praying for God's internal organs, Lord yes. Our hearts, Lord God. Our lungs, Lord God. Our livers, our bodies, our kidneys, Lord God. Our yes. intestines, Lord God. Our prostate, Lord God. Our mm. parents, Lord God. Our parents, Lord God. All yes. these yes. internal organs, Lord God. Mm. Keep them functioning right now in the name mm. of yes. Jesus, Lord God. And Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God. We pray for our children, Lord God. In yeah. the parents, Lord God, some are struggling to raise children, Lord God. Some are single, Lord God, some are not. But we're praying for our children, Lord God. Lord God, some are doing good and some are doing bad. Lord God. We lift them up to you, God. Lord God, that you are. Lord God, that they'll be obedient, Lord God. They won't be stubborn, hard-headed, Lord God. But Lord God, mm-hmm. they'll bring those of the parents, Lord God, teachers, Lord God, that they'll be good right, Lord God. Even the adults not um, watching them, Lord God. So, Lord God, we just pray for them, Lord God, our kids, even in school, Lord God. Yes. Give them a mind to study, Lord God, a mind to learn, Lord God. Keep our kids safe, Lord God, as they play sports, Lord God, and do this and that, Lord God. Keep them safe, Lord God, as they wait on that, that, that bus stop, Lord God. Keep them safe, Lord God, for yes. predators, Lord God. Someone that wants to steal and abuse our children, Lord God. We lift them up to you, God. We pray for our seniors, Lord God. Lord God, have, have mercy on them, Lord God. Have mercy, Lord God. Lord God, somebody's traveling, Lord God. Give them, Lord God, traveling grace and mercy, Lord God. And Lord God, we pray for caregivers, Lord God. So many people in that caregiver goal, Lord God, for a short term or long term, Lord God. We pray for that strength, Lord God, that stamina, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for that compassion and integration, Lord God. Sometimes they have to make tough decisions, Lord God, about loved ones, Lord God. We have to guide them every step of the way, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And Lord God, we pray for pastors everywhere, God. We pray, Lord God, for churches everywhere, God. Again, we pray for our homes, Lord God. We pray, God, for peace will abide in our homes, love will abide in our homes, Lord God. We just give you all praise today. But you're still a good God, Lord God. We love you. We adore you, God. Have the way in Jesus. Amen. 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 Let us stand for the benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, may the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. The church say amen. 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 Amen.